What are y'all waiting for? Jesus is dead. So what y'all gonna do now? You know what? Don't answer that. Let me guess. You're gonna lock all your beliefs up behind closed doors. And everything he said and did would be forgotten because right now his body is rotting in a tomb just like all the rest of the prophets. But wasn't he different? I mean, he said he was the Messiah. He said he was the Messiah and had folks holding on to that like balloons. He had folks holding on to that like balloons until the Pharisees rolled up and popped it like boop. And what's sad is that now most of his followers are trying to remove the covenant and undo the promises that tied him to them. But not Mary and the ladies. Now, nah, this morning they went to pull more cologne on his body, an act of love and devotion. But I'm not sure if it'll be enough to cover up the stench that was left behind in the religious leaders' noses. Y'all know they was out to get him, right? And probably anybody associated with him, so that could be why his disciples went into hiding. Then again, there's this rumor going around saying that the disciples stole his body. So that could be why they didn't believe Mary Magdalene when she said that she had seen him. I mean, she thought he was the gardener at first until he called her by name, and then she recognized that voice that cast out all her demons, and she swore she wasn't just seeing things, said that she actually hugged him, actually hugged him and squeezed him, didn't want to let him go. And she was bringing all this up to the disciples while they were still mourning and grieving like, woman, how dare you interrupt our tear and snot fest with what they believe was just a bunch of nonsense. But I know that conscience had to be weighing on him heavily like Peter's when he denied. I mean, how could they not believe Jesus when he said that he would die and in three days come back to life after everything that they had seen? Maybe while Jesus was asleep, the enemy came and planted weeds among the good seeds that he had sown. But I don't know that for sure. So look, let me leave that one alone. And it really doesn't matter because all of a sudden, all of a sudden he was in the room. He was in the room with them. Like, what's up? And now the disciples can't believe their eyes. Dizzy with excitement, frightened, acting as if they were actually seeing a ghost, Jesus had to let them touch him and eat something just to prove that he was flesh and bones. Now look, it shouldn't have took all that, but I'm glad it did because how many of us struggle with some wavering belief and doubts of our own? Thirsty for knowledge and understanding that pours out of them like a fountain of a well with waters capable of solving all our problems. Oh, the sigh of relief when he showed back up because the disciples were lost without him. And so are we. It's okay, let's talk about it while we wait for the Messiah to come back again. Again? I know it's like they say, God works in mysterious ways. Jesus had to leave so that the Holy Spirit could take its place in their hearts and convict them. Keep them on their toes like ballet instructors and assist them with baptisms and bringing the good news of the Savior to all nations. And they didn't speak holy, so it was also their translator. And that same Holy Spirit is willing to work with you and your generation. So what are you waiting for? After church? Get something to eat, maybe take a nap, enjoy the rest of your day before school or you have to go back to work? Are you comfortable with just going through the motions like a choreographer? Well, do that if you choose to, but not allowing him to use you. Usually that type stuff just collects dust and the job will get done. He might have to run out and get himself some new tools and he'll just deal with you afterwards. But he won't give up on you like I did this old cell phone app called Flappy Birds. Actually, he wants to see your life less crappier and more happier. Don't get it twisted. This gospel is the good news. We just reject it because we some old wretched men. After eating that fruit, you know the fall that made us know it all? That's actually what's preventing us from seeing and being close to God because he's a God so holy that he's invisible to us now. But instead of leaving it like that or putting us in our place, he put himself in our shoes and became a man to once again give us something to focus on. Jesus, the perfect example, the perfect sacrifice, the reason lambs, doves, rams, goats, and human beings aren't extinct. Jesus walked this earth for 30 something years and we didn't rub off on him. I'm glad we didn't and he was strictly about his father's business. We needed that. So I don't blame the disciples for staring into the sky until he disappeared like that balloon that got away. I'm thankful that the life of Christ was documented and he lived and died to atone for the sins that I still commit to this day. I'm grateful that he showed us a way back to the father and out of this wilderness by dropping gems. Dropping gems all throughout the Bible. He's gone, but we got everything that we need right here. It's right here. So what are you waiting for?